We're away. Right. Part two. Right. Part two, there it is. Show's better part two part instead of three parts. Three parts was long. Well, part three was a bit of a, you know, people are missing the pearls, I'm sure, but you'll just have to pick out the pearls through the show. Um, yeah, because they're still there. Sort of Especially there's lots of pearls from the Glenstar and God's, you know, God's been giving a few tips of his own that he, I'm sure he's, Good he there, looks yeah. back and on. If he can get his mind out of the gutter. <laughs> anyway, oh. hi Racing Rant. Hopefully this gets to you in time for the Rancho and here it is. But I just want to say how weak is the Craven Plate field from Saturday. Five runners for 150000 in prize money, it's a joke. And if memory serves me correct, it's Blen's, oh it's my birthday, was it? Yeah it was, yeah. And happy birthday to me. Thanks very much, Hugh Jass. Is that his name, Hugh Jass? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's nice. his name. And um, the Craven Plate, I, look, I think we just got to accept that that's... The Craven Plate used to be a lead up to the Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. So run on the Saturday and you could back up into the Metropolitan on the Monday. And uh, Battle Heights beat Taras Bulba in 1976. Taras Bulba was like sixes on or something. Wow. Uh, and they went around again in the Metropolitan on Monday. And Battle Heights won the Metropolitan. It, 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 look, it's just lost its way as a race because it's not feeding anything. Um, yeah, Tank went to but, just, you know, like, <clears throat> we want to get cranky about it, but it's just a race. It's like, it's got it's got a lot of history, and we'll be, we'd, we'd be sad if it went. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Anyway, it, it was ordinary betting, maybe it'll improve. Yeah, oh, no, I blame Volantis for everything. Talking about blaming Volantis for everything, um, it just seems anyone who's got any little bit of anything to do in the media in racing has got to really toe a very careful line. Well, you haven't got Richard Freeman on retro anymore. Do you know who that is? No. Richard Freeman hasn't been on retro. Oh, why? Oh, did, no one knows why. What's happened? Well, he's probably pretty busy doing a lot of other stuff, too. No, I'm tipping no. you must have said something. Oh. They got they got rid of the kennel. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, is Nick Atchman on racing retro now? It was Ronnie. Isn't it called something else? It's called Thoroughbred Weekly. Right. Okay, so it's, we call it Racing Rant, but we're still Punisher. But yeah. we're Racing Rant. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all okay, okay. Everyone knows who you're talking okay, about. Okay, so why is Richard Freeman not in Thoroughbred Weekly? you got Greg Radley, who, who would, you know, he'd never say anything. He'll never say one thing out of place. He's a professional. He's a thorough professional. I think he's pretty good, too. I prefer him to the last one. The bloke with the, yeah, the, the wing nut. Matt, yeah. Matt Browning. Matt yeah. Browning. Yeah. Why is he winged that other years? Yeah. <laughs> Figure like that. <laughs> um, there's no Richard Freeman. Why not? I don't know. We're going to find out why. So, what? He, 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 if, he, if he said something that's politically incorrect, then ra there's no hope for racing as far as... There's no hope for racing anyway, so just don't worry about it. Don't worry well, about it's it. Almost but just, like, just... It's almost like the Nazi party's in control of every different paper. Well, it is. That's, That's the way it is. That's terrible. So instead, of, totalitarian instead of the regime. SWAT sticker, it's green with white writing in the middle, is it? <laughs> I don't know. Just <laughs> maybe we could do a skit. Why can't we that? have a bit of colour yeah. in racing and have a bit of like? Uh, oh. You know that skit that they use from that movie where Hitler's in the bunker and they dump yeah, out? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah. in that one. About, yeah, I, I was in that one. <laughs> fucking bollocks! Fucking yeah. <laughs> 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 male sucks. <laughs> Or whatever. Yeah. That was a great skit. Anyway, yeah. Uh, All right. Then from straight into Glenn liking M&M yeah, last Tom. week. Thanks, Tom. I do like M&M. Uh, mm. uh, so Phil Gibb um, wrote last Monday while he was waiting for the rant to come up, and we have worked out how to get the rant up faster. Well, Where are you boys? Quarter past nine on Monday evening and no review program. Have you upset someone else, i.e. Chris Waller, and are languishing in some prison cell, or have you just been slack, or better still, are you going to blame a technical problem? I actually got half, um, not half, not fully. I was in the company of Chris Waller's wife yesterday. I didn't get, oh, this is Chris Waller's wife. I just said, oh, this is, I said, hello, darling, and then this is Chris Waller's wife. And she looked a very lovely lady. There you go. She's an ex model, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Like, God, God. Like, I'm not talking about, like, what a, even, like, she just seemed like a very nice person. person. But then yeah. when she walked away, it's very easy to be pleasant when the old man's bringing home 60k yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah. But she did look like an ornament to but his Chris Wallace is a nice bloke, too. I didn't say he was. Well, you know, if you like that... Nice bloke, uh, nice woman, it's all yeah, good. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. She seemed like... A but what a, woman, what a woman. When he was going no good, she was paying the bills. Tunica? When he first came to Sydney, she was modelling and he had no money when he was setting up his training enterprise. 
wow. she was paying the bills. I'm in love with her more than she's a similar nice lady. But um, yeah, I don't think she'll be getting sacked from the stable for a race day treatment or anything. Is there any truth in the rumour that Glenn was seeing singing, mouthing the National Anthem at Rose Hill on Saturday last? No truth at all. I was singing it. I always sing the National Anthem. I never mouth it. Do you want to sing for the show? Or you, <laughs> no, you I sing just want to When it comes on, I sing it. Do you stand? Uh, yes. yes. And do you look, I don't know, west No, I don't. I, never, I just, I don't. No. I just, I just sing the National and Anthem. And at the same time. No, I don't do that. <laughs> I sing the National Anthem. But I wasn't mouthing. Uh, also, I sing it. You know, the yeah, I learned that from school, but doesn't everyone sing the National Anthem? I think it was God Save the, God Save the Queen when we were at school. Then. I used to sing that. Yeah, but I still the anthem. Comes on. I was a private school boy. You're told to sing it. I fucking sing it. I do what I'm told in life. He's a very good boy. And his mother always said he was a very good boy. My mother loved me so much. Uh, Mark was wearing a hat that could only be described as a cadet steward's get out. Is he thinking of a new career on the other side of the racing fence? Well, I have to say that I'm tipping that the stewards don't wear hats anymore. Well, there always seem plenty of spots come available. We've lost one of the stewards in the last week or so. No, nothing in the news about Who's it. That? One, one of the detectives is gone. I know why. And I can't <laughs> say it on this show. Oh, dear. Then uh, Gordon, I did, Gordon I did a bit. Oh, God, I wish I could say it. Yeah, can't say it. I can't, don't want to talk about it. I know all about it. Can't say. Yeah, and right. do you know why? I, I, look, I don't know anything about this. You know all the goss. I never know any goss. Yeah, he's been asked to go. Right. Yeah. Um, Apparently, well, some stewards don't like other stewards being normal people. I'll leave it at that. I heard there's a bookie at the racetrack that sees his rabbi at the start of each month. Yeah, well, everyone does that. Ask if it's the lucky three, numbers. Yeah, yeah. It's three that, numbers. So Are they true. different numbers yeah. each month? Yeah, he sees the robot. But uh, does he get given different numbers each month? I don't know, but all I know... So I was watching him on Sunday thinking, is, he's all, is he I'm always a you. point longer on a particular number? Like, Well, alright, yeah. these are facts, and these yeah. are facts, and caveat. Every person I know that is really religious seems to be... do very well in life and be extremely fortunate. And people like me who are sarcastic and not religious and bag the shit out of the whole system because it's wrong are particularly unlucky. Well, it's um, right. well they're not shitting in their nest and you so are, are you, shitting Are in you your suggesting nest? there's evidence for the existence of a god? No, I'm saying there's evidence <laughs> of the old Glenster being a born against. Very fucking <laughs> very <laughs> Fucking what? Alright, so, so this time next it year, won't Glenn Landry, won't be hanging from the tree, he'll actually be at Hillsong. In Alexandria, oh. on the boat, you'll be on the bus. If it means Adam Hieronymus doesn't lose races on protest and I get fucking my even share of photo finishes, I'll beat Hillsong. There you go. <laughs> uh, last Tuesday, Gordon and I filmed a preview show, Sands Glen. He was sacked from the show. I've and, been and it had the, uh, the effect of um, costing us and some pundits some money. Yep. Uh, those of us who uh, tipped, our, tipped our wares into Cottage, um, as Steve Lindell said during the race, he said, there goes the roof. And Michael Walker wrote, there goes my house. And Melbourne Mick said, yeah, I put two of my houses on. Well, I hope you've got plenty of houses there, Mick. <laughs> Mark Crookshank from the same program. Big load of crookie. Uh, and I'm sure he's a happy camper now. That he's the, a Twitter man, isn't he? Or he's also a... be a very happy camper now that the Sharks have broken the, broken the drought. Oh, he'd be stoked, wouldn't he? Yeah. And great it's, game, too. Great game. It was a really good Breath game. didn't get too involved. It was great. How'd they lose, Melbourne? Well, they were home. They How'd were they home. Lose? Well, they were home. They were home, they gave away the penalty, and then they were still home. The bloke does the kick and pass to the left to dopey little Cronk. Mm. <laughs> well, well, Cronulla right. deserved to win the match. Or I'm maybe not, they didn't uh, uh, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, how did they get home? It was like... You just thought it, it was, was going like to be another Blake one of those McDougal freakish... It was like Blake McDougal on Augustus. I know what it was. It was more people praying in the Shire than were praying in Melbourne, because those fucking prayers... Fucking rabbis and everything else. They have We're a, a very line. religious area down there in the Fucking show. Don't worry, the old we, I'll we, be, we, we pray for all non-whites to die. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> if I have no luck with Sheila's or anything more, I will become a priest. At least you get a house and board, a feed, and you get to long arm from the plate. I think it <laughs> fucking suits me. <laughs> you know what? I reckon you get hit on by. I reckon you get hit on by plenty of birds too. Because they're always like, what a trophy to put on your cabinet. I banged a priest. Yeah. You know? It's oh, like, it reminds me of, it reminds me of, no, I can't even say that either. I don't want to mention Blake's name because he's dirty enough for me. So See, Blake, Blake's going out with the beautiful Schofield girl. She's beautiful. Well, does, does Glenn supply the bloody jockey's partners, does he? <laughs> yeah, but you know that game, didn't they? 
don't know anything. Oh, they're very, very close and very, very in love, which is great for her and great for Blake. And I couldn't be more happy for people that are happy. But you were talking about the trophy case the girls want to do. How, if you're a bloke, how do you break up with the widow? The ex widow. You can't break up with her ever. No. So Blake Miles and Mario. Oh, right, okay, okay, okay. It's Whitney. It's little, yeah, it's young Whitney, yeah. It's a beautiful kid. And you know, they look very happy. But how No, you can't ever break up with her. You can't ever break up with her. No. She can break up with you. Otherwise you are the world's worst ever. You ever. are the lowest fucking thing of all time. <laughs> and is it because she was out like she was mourning for a couple of years and her grief must have been awful and we all know how sad it was. Yeah. But how he's locked in. Isn't he? No, 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 because he manipulates the situation. How? By doing certain little things wrong that you know what, upset st her. Start smoking or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, she, then she ditches him. Oh, it's the reverse yeah, poker yeah, player. Yeah, 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 I forgot you're yeah. a poker player. <laughs> a lot of wisdom on this show. Anyway, Crookie eventually said, yeah. can we bring it back works. Slaughter of the Quarter? Yeah, it works. You start not wearing the odour and... Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fart at dinner time. <laughs> Eat with your fingers. Fuck, don't and, you clean know, your teeth. Give us a kiss, <laughs> yeah. yeah, pick your nose. <laughs> Fuck, these are all things I do. Uh, yeah, go on, sorry, man. And you will be able to continue doing when you join the priesthood. Yeah, well, see, there may be something mm -hmm. about that because I've been singing the. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, Cookie was very unhappy about the ride on Broadside. Kobe Jennings on Broadside should have walked in, watched the last hundred, then after the line. Horse had so much to give and, and went un, unutilised, I think is what he's saying. Um, the Overs God strikes again. Gord, what did you say about the ride on Broadside? I, I didn't watch it. I haven't done the tape. Um, I, 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 when I went to watch it, I thought there was going to be more compelling, his case was going to be more compelling than it turned out to be. Okay. I, I, like the time though in his average, I, they, they didn't go slowly, but I, he's saying he could have been more aggressive. Mm. In you know in Johan Victor style. Yeah. Uh, um, I had a um, an ordinary midweek on the tips there last week, and uh, yeah, Paul, yeah. Paul Dozer Day he emailed in saying, "Mounting yard mail's on fire. You didn't seem to want to back up and buy it last week there. Um, wouldn't take those Mark Four best tips for free. They are shit house. Today's best bet dazzles. Second starter over a thousand from gate one. What the fuck? Please don't send any more. Now listen, Paul, you've got to be a bit more like you know to the point." <laughs> He's giving it to you there, Marcus. No, I'm not. Can't I, make it, I, Yeah, Wednesday and Thursday last week, I did a mint. Oh, yeah, this, was it, was it this is a great email from Mark War, and, and Mark's a great part of the show. And, and um, when you read his emails, they're great. And he's very passionate, and obviously married to Kim. And, and um, anyway, you can Yeah, remember. having better, better success with the horses than perhaps the selecting, you know? Yeah, perhaps, but what a gig that is. Um, so, Glenstar. Whilst everybody is entitled to their opinion... Great comment, first comment there. That's a great comment because that opinion pays his wife's wages, pays the steward's wages, pays the jockey's wages. An opinion creates a market and racing wouldn't be here without gamblers forming opinions. So great first comment. And it's part of the fabric of being involved in racing. Great. And he doesn't write however, but I think he should write however. Your assessment that Calibre Sass is a suck is unfair. Now, remembering the show, did I say it was a suck or I said, is it a bit of a suck? I think I was more... Yeah, you were asking the question. I was throwing it up. I didn't say, this think, horse is a suck. But I think you might have been playing a little bit of devil's advocate there as well. Too, right? Oh, Cause fuck, cause stop sucking Mark Taylor, uh, Mark... Yeah. As if that has anything to do with it. Fuck, what are you talking about? Like, you're not going to get a job as a selector. Fuck off, boy. <laughs> Regardless of Saturday's result, as you'll read this out on the round on Monday, he's run three close seconds in he his has. last three runs from the spell. Has. And I, I assume that when you refer to a horse as a suck, you mean that the horse is not genuine or not trying. Can I just uh, come in there? I was only asking, is it a suck? And the reason, I'll tell you why, that Calabas is, and I know this won't make sense to a lot of you players out there, but from the mounting yard, horses with a, a different coloured mane, like a golden mane to a golden skin colour, uh, over the years have not been great line chasers. They really haven't. Oh, they go past... It's genetic. I don't know what it oh, you're is. You're saying they're too good looking. Yeah. Well, they come past me. <laughs> they come past me and I always think, stick a pole right through them and put them on a carousel. <laughs> That's how they parade. And, and so it's always been in my mind that it, it, it's to do with his skin colour and his mane being a different colour. I know it doesn't make, it doesn't make oh, no, sense so, either. So you're racist in the horse world as well. Fucking oath. Go on, anyway. 
Um, <laughs> Caliber Sass last three seconds a result of the circumstances of the race, not the fact that he's a suck. So first, he's not a suck, Mrs. Farrell. First up at Gosford over a thousand, he ran second when way underdone. That was like his second trial. Okay. Big a lot of the connections there. He then jumped the 1300 on a heavy 10 at Wyong when he ran second. And at Newcastle to Akatur, and in doing so, he ran the quickest last 600 of the day when balked twice down the straight a point my mate Gordo mate. Oh fuck. <laughs> my God, now I'm gonna cop it, hey, come on. He's not my are you mate banging Gordo. On the wall, are you? Oh, I thought it was a fantastic run. Okay. Oh. You'll also yeah. notice that although beaten in those three starts, he's had his ears back. A sure sign a horse is trying his best. Add to that he's still learning his caper and a good six months of being the finished article. A good six months off being the finished article. Finally, as a rule, why is it the horses run a lot of seconds always seem to get a bad rap when the horses that finished behind them never get the same bagging? That's a good point, because I suppose as punters we remember horses that run seventh yeah, because we backed them or we've lost on them or how did they seven us? When your horse runs seventh, you know, go I back that it runs seventh time. Um, but anyway, let's I get I think it's particular mention when there is a cat of a horse that looms to win and comes second all the time. Well, you're saying it's a cat of a horse, and he's arguing to say, is that is and it I, actually a cat of a horse? I, or I'm are saying it's well, it circumstance. You know, it depends on the circumstance. Well, if you're coming second to Winks, like, okay. Jesus, so what, the, what are you this, saying? Like when this when horse, Black this Caviar, and what was that other horse he used to come A-list, second to? Hayless. Hayless. Like, Hayless is Mark sent this. Mark sent this in before Saturday, and of course we saw Calabas go around it. About four dollars eighty and come out and run last. OSL and lame. Well, horses think, are always lame when they run last. Are they lame? No, no. I think it could be argued that Calibus Ass has no metropolitan credentials. It was the first time he'd ever turned up in a city race on Saturday, and he was asked to be favourite. Okay, I'm saying this horse is not a suck, and we will know more in six months. And that him being an owner, is and entitled if you, if to stick you, up for his horse. Want, if you want to improve his performance. Get that dye that maybe Glenn and Mark and I should be using. What's that stuff called? That? Grecian. Grecian 2000 on the, the colour. Grecian 2000 on the mane I'm and you'll you. be tipping it in the arse. If you've got a golden mane, <laughs> you're a fucking suck. But anyway, this horse, my, uh, I, Mark's a good judge, so... Anyway, horse did come out and run last. There you Might have be it. a bit of a fucking... Although, he, he, he came back with uh, the first winner on... Um, on the Japanese horse, it doesn't need to do a good job. Freckier. Or, or, or how, did it, how did it do such a good job off that low run in Hawkesbury? Well, I thought it was a, you know, I thought it found a particularly, no, like, you know, Coison Co. I think it found a particularly gimme race at Hawkesbury, and um, but there it was, there it was. Bigger right. load of the gun, bigger load and of the And I've got to say about uh, Kim's stable, never gone better. Well, it could be the foreman. Sticking up for his horses, right knee mask. <laughs> what about the fact that she wears, like, the, gets the jockeys to wear the, Pink. The skin tight. Oh, the lycra. So the lycra. Oh, I actually think it's a good idea. Like, what? So, well, her you, colour, her 100 colour, metre sprinters or runners, they all wear lycra. Bike riders listen, wear lycra. Look, Why not get the, your jockeys they in? They were all wear lycra, lycra weren't they? And what, what happened? Could it add like maybe 0.1 of a second to your time? I don't know. Maybe it makes those horses run second instead of third. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw Shin go fast when a horse his pants pulled down. He was just bare skin in the last 100. <laughs> That was great. Maybe he didn't shave. That Maybe great. that that that, that, that allowed great. the air to hit his yeah. hairy ass or something. <laughs> no, I think I know he was he was all waxed up then. I think he was single. I think he'd be, <laughs> yeah. he'd be hairy now. He was waxed up in those days. Don't worry about that. Cliff wrote uh, oh. congratulations on Tippy Mo Queen and Dibiani. Well, Dibiani didn't win. He said that's a sensational effort. Unfortunately, I didn't follow your lead. So big of does a day. You missed out on Mo Queen. Well, you probably did get Mo Queen because I was on the show on Friday. Uh, I'd like to make a suggestion for Racing Rants tipping products. I think your sales and followers would benefit from some kind of training on how to use both yours and Nick's sheets. And Gord has mentioned that this is in the wings. I'm sure there's a lot of part-time putters out there who don't understand the benefits of staking plans and overlays, etc. Thanks, regards, Cliff. Well, we are working on it. Unfortunately, it's we funny how, how people don't understand. They don't understand our. Wait, like, because they're not, prof- you know, I yeah, they're amateurs. Like, a, a mate of mine, he had 500 on Corolla at the beginning of the year oh, at wow. $15. Yeah. Okay, so great. And 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 he said to me, he said, I, I was going to lay Melbourne on Saturday just to chop it out. <laughs> yeah, and I was going, yeah, yeah. And I, never said, I never said nothing. I went, oh, okay, yeah, okay. But I he understand. meant back Melbourne. Of course he meant that. A lot of people but think lay is back. It's, yeah, weird. it's weird. weird, it's yeah. weird. And he said, but. Because they, they've, they've heard this expression, lay the odds. 
I was, gonna, I was gonna lay Melbourne to, uh, to get my, and I, I, I didn't say anything. I said, "Thank God you didn't." Lie. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, he, he would have won twice. Fair, yeah, yeah. If go, but if he goes to bet fair, he just amazing. goes to the lay column. I know. Well, do you know why he didn't do it? Because he couldn't remember paying the five hundred dollars for the bet because the bet was paid for. He said, "I'll just go down with the ship because <laughs> the money's already been spent." Because yeah. it's all worth it. You know, the money was spent yeah, six yeah, months yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't not miss it. He's not. He's not part of his bank, and these dirty, filthy misses will, you know. Get some money off him, but like, you know, big alone to his business. Yeah, you know. No, it's alright, seven and a half thousand for a muck around bet that he doesn't care about. Eight lovely work. Eight thousand. Fifteen hundred took because he collects eight. Like I said, he didn't even get the fifteen hundred. He didn't worry about the five hundred. He took sixteen dollars. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tim, it's like eight thousand yeah, yeah, derived. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he's lost the five hundred. Yeah. That's how those poor people think. Yeah. That five hundred's gone, I, I, I paid for it. What about the guys on poke machines? They, they come back and they go, oh, I go, how would you go? And they go, oh, I won 400. So but you know what? I have to say the stupid thing back to them. How much did you put in? Like, I, I would expect people, if they said they won 400, they yeah, won be 400. Net. They put in 200 and got back six. The amount of times you last these black and they go, oh, I'll put 200 in. Say so you won 200. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how can you think like that? Like, how do you think like that? Well, think like that? But pokies need you to think like that. Uh, yeah. They're so. great pokies. Tarragindi Tiger, he wrote in after the Epsom, he said, Kiwi's still on top. Well, he's very excited. Congratulations to Johan Victoire on your ride on Fabrizio. Unfortunately, your effort of 58.45 for the first first thousand just fell short. TK Allen, he used to ride Empire Rose. A meat worker correction, a meat worker correction jockey from New Zealand recorded 58.4 for the 1998 Epsom on Brazil Bay. Trade by Paul Perry. That's right. Who, uh, whose horse two-year-old ran so well on Saturday. Enjoy the show. Uh, he does you. enjoy the show. Sorry. Good on you, the Tarragindi Tiger. Is he from New Zealand? Well, I, I, well he could do. Does he's, that mean, can you watch the show in New Zealand? Yeah, you can watch the show and you can even get Mountie Yard Mail from New Zealand. Big hello to Tom Ford who got the Mountie Yard Mail on Saturday from, direct from Randwick. Well, they do, do like to someone in New Zealand. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. right. What a champion party. He would have won too. Hi guys, hope everyone had a fill up over the long weekend. Just a quick couple of questions. What do you think of neural ratings? Is that neutral ratings or neural? Neural, neural. that can be useful at all. Also, to you Mark and Gord, how do you record and track all your bets placed? I'm assuming Glenn doesn't. <laughs> oh, you know me so fucking well, don't you? <coughs> Mr. Who is it? Blake. Blake, yeah. You know me so well, Blake. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't record anything. I'm like going really, really good. He's got heaps of money and I'm just going mad and nice restaurants and go on the beach and do whatever I like or I've got absolutely no money on flyblown and I just go to nice restaurants and go to the beach and do it all I like. So not much really changes. As Jeff couldn't be said, if I ever won a lot of the only thing that changes I bet people. I wouldn't really do it. I'm not gonna buy it. I reckon it'd be funny if you explain to your family that you've lost <laughs> the whole lot of winnings a month later. <laughs> you know, oh, that would be funny, It's a story my dad used to tell me, actually. He goes, I hate to win Lotto Gordo. He said, because how would I explain to everybody how I lost it all in a month? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's that he, he's thinking of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the Newman, the Newman. Newman. Um, yeah. So, Gord, how do you, how do you record your bets? Okay, so it's, I, I record track, track conditions, the time of the bet. Um, <laughs> for fuck's sake! Put it in the time yeah. of the bet, and then I and I have no idea. And it goes into an Excel spreadsheet, and my personal assistant puts it all in for me. <laughs> oh, beauty! Yeah. So, uh, so is she entering the data? Data? So of it's course, because it takes, just, it takes it her a minute, and it, <laughs> me, it'd take me about. Well, can I tell you? Can that? I tell you? That if because I, uh, to know whether I'm going any good at a track, because I might just be in a track okay, and not bet there. Get to that the theory. time I bet, so are the prices I'm taking in the early markets providing value for me, or should I be waiting later on? What's my better return? <coughs> so if you're losing the track, does that mean you don't bet there anymore? Oh, I'll stop for a while, or I'll well, reduce if, my bet. What happens if that all of a sudden turns the other way, and that's when you're going to have a winning period of that track? Well, evidence is saying that I'm not handling the that particular form on that particular track or the betting on that particular track well. So I don't, bet in, I don't bet in Northern New South Wales. Stewie Davidson used to do this, have you? He wouldn't bet at Warwick Farm for years. Yeah, he turned up Wyong, didn't he? Um, but Snow's just turned up Hawkesbury. But I don't understand, is it just tracks you bet there? 
Well, well, they, they consider that they, they do less well on those tracks. So, oh, okay. What, 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 what happens if you wake up one morning and every morning for, you've, you've worn your red undies five mornings a month, and those five months, days of the month you lost, you stop wearing red undies? Yeah. That's fucked up. <laughs> Obviously, there's no evidence behind that one. Well, that is some. with analysing the form, but I am a little bit superstitious about things like that too. And I do have a lucky pair of red undies. <laughs> there's no way you're superstitious, are you? I try not to be, sure. but uh, of course it enters. Like, I, like Alan like Aiken once said, the cigarette. Alan Aiken once wrote to us and said, sooner the, you know, deity. No, the, the sky, there was that thing, the big hole in the spoon. Oh, the ozone layer. Yeah, a hole in the ozone The sooner layer. it grows up and we all explode, the better off we'll all be. That, and he's, that was so right. <laughs> what are you going to do for entertainment? Just be funny, everyone run around going, ah, I haven't got me red undies on. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> I'm superstitious. <laughs> quick, quick, hide me. Oh. Um, I used to always look like, like, you know, in the change rooms before soccer, I had a thing of, you know, that's always good. putting the left boot on first. You that's know, called it, mental illness. It is, it is. Yeah, it's it complete stupidity, but human beings have a tendency towards that, and you've got to try and um, try and analyse data like I do with my betting so that... Um, it's I'll, based on solid like, information rather, fucking, rather, you want some advice. rather than superstition. When you're winning, bet bigger. When you're losing, try to bet smaller. Um, fucking easy. There is a facility, anyone who bets through dynamic odds, and I do all my betting through dynamic odds, and you can just export a spreadsheet of your bets. So, I mean... So they do Betfair too? Well, I, I haven't bet through dynamic odds on Betfair. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that one. But I, obviously on Betfair you can export as well. Yeah, yeah. So... For those of you that are using either of those, that, that, that's, that's a means of actually keeping track of what you're doing. Uh, and the other question, the, the neurals, I don't know much about the neurals and I'd be happy to hear from anybody that watches the show that, has a, that follows the neurals and has an opinion on them. So please write in so that we can help Blake out. Uh, Jared says, hey Mark, just going through your sheets, I noticed four numbers sent out are often very different to your first four and your rate of prices, that's correct. If you're going to discuss how to play your full set on the show, can you also talk about what your numbers are and how to play them in isolation? Cheers. You guys need to do a show on how to yeah. play the shoot. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can answer those. What, are you know? sacking <laughs> yourself from that show? Oh, no, but many of you mate, you just can't breathe without it. That's all I had to do. We're doing a show on your stuff as well. What the fuck? When? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. so, uh, Jared, yes, we will cover that. But uh, briefly, I'm trying to give in my tips insight into how hard I've gone looking for a horse. So the fact that I come up with twos and I haven't looked for it, I don't necessarily put that on top. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to, through those numbers, say, I tried really hard to find this horse. I've marked it $10, but I tried so hard, I want to give you an indication, and that's why I'm tipping it. Yeah. Um, it's like if I got something on top of Manning Yard Mail, there's $15 in the ring, and I got the favourite third pick from the parade. If you start put a gun up my head and say, Clem, which has got a better chance? The thing on top or the thing that's... Fordless, what well, the Fordless, what is your version? But I think you should be working yeah. your betting into this one. Yeah, you, you, you're giving insight, isn't, isn't it? But like, you, your system gives you a price, and then no. you can't don't have too much flexibility. Or no, 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 I, I have complete flexibility. Um, you know, they're all decisions. They're all you know anguish decisions, which is why after the first yesterday, I'm just cursing and spluttering, and you know, because I could have easily let, let myself find that horse that I analysed out of the race, minor frick here, um, and you know, I made a decision not to, and it's, you know, decisions are just, they're, they're torture, aren't they? I'm Archie Servens. David Diamond, big friend of the show, I hope you had a good day at Flemington, uh, with mixed mail, great comment by the Glenster, if you have depression, just call me, then you will know what depression is, hashtag worth a laugh. Mm. Well, it wasn't meant to be funny, it's the truth. Just fucking ring me if you're going I always again. think the best solution to depression, yeah, is to find somebody in a worse situation yeah, than you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When I'm really... Go and, go and, like go and feed fun homeless feeling people depressed. or something like that. We'll see someone in the wheelchair going along with no legs chopped off. Yeah, and say, yeah. How you going, mate? You been for a run today? See what he says. <laughs> fucking... <laughs> do you have to verbalise it? Or no, do you just, just, just in your thoughts, it, yeah. yeah. But uh, a lot of depression is feeling sorry for yourself, and a lot of feeling sorry for yourself is I want to feel sorry for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, so they're actually not looking to try and fix yourself out of that. Mm. It, that's, it's a bit glib to say that about it, but the, all the feeling sorry for yourself is generally deliberate. 
it's yeah. like you know, I'm, I'm, I, I really want to feel sorry for myself. Like when people say that they're unlucky because they never win photo finishes. Yeah. All day. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's, it's, it's just me. Uh, like Steve Collar used to run around going, "Can you believe she's put me on this one?" He's always the total lady. He'd always put him on the wrong horse. Yeah, I must admit he did do it a lot. Um, uh, Grant said, uh, tech, uh, "Tweeted, uh, tweeted, uh, Glenster walks that fine line between failure and greatness." Hashtag goes one run too early. I was that talking? Yeah, that about was the weekend hustler. Weekend hustler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Matt Taylor. Uh, yeah, I saw you. Matt Taylor won. He, he tweeted, "Here it is. The jock was Luke Nolan." Good on you, Luke. Thanks for that day with the road weekend hustler. For hey, there, there should be an Jeez, inquiry into that. He's gone run. now that the, the trainer's retired, isn't he? Really? Nolan, is he getting any rides oh. now? Or? Luke Nolan, no, I don't know. He's, he'll come back. He'll probably find his way. Um, uh, HRA tips. He he um, he was interested in whether there's another video, not an instructional video, but well, sort of an instructional video. Is there a video on racing around that details the breakdown of you guys and the Punter Show relationship? Interested to know what happened. And I thought, wow, okay. So I tweeted back, filming will commence after casting. Any suggestions? Blah, blah, blah. And then we had a few suggestions. Firstly, uh, Nick Heathco from Betfair, he, he said, well, surely Evan Handler from Californication, Charlie Runkle in his character in that show, would play Dal. He's the spit. I'll give you a look at that one. That's so funny. Well, where am I going? Oh, and if you know his character on California, do you watch it? No. Like, <laughs> it's it's pretty, pretty spot on. I don't know Dallas very well, but I'd assume it would be close to that. looks like Dallas. Yeah, ratings to win said surely the soup will have to go. Well, Dallas no. gets up in a good dog no. gets in his soup. Grant P said uh, you'll need someone to, to create a music score. Maybe Glenster could collaborate with Jay Z. Jay Z? Jay Z? No, I don't think, <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't yeah, think I'll be yeah, collaborating yeah, with Jay Z. Yeah. He doesn't do my style of music. <laughs> Uh, and, then, and then Mad Panda tweeted in Stallone auditioning for the role of Pollock. Oh, character attire. Well, he's got attire. There's the hoodie there, so that's. Uh, yeah. 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 I wouldn't mind being as rich as um, fit as old Rocky Balboa. Well, get going. on the growth hormones, mate. Get on the juice. The juice is a go. Yeah, juice is a go. Why not? I, I reckon. Well, my son I'm always, gonna, I'm my son always says to me, me about the juice now. He's like 35. Yeah. He said, Dad, you're 54 now. You're completely yeah. gone anyway. Yeah. What are you worried about taking the juice? Like it might it's not like you're going to test if you, positive. If, if you get yeah. cancer or something now, yeah. what's the difference anyway? You're yeah. happy to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I said, you might feel better about yourself. <laughs> you know, all <we'll> bubble. <laughs> oh, could you imagine that? No. Like a couple of months down the track. Yeah, no, no. With one of those little yeah. singlets. Looking like Aaron Barbie. <laughs> Aaron Mason. Aaron Mason. <laughs> I want to say Barbie, don't I? Yeah. Uh, Barbie. You'd have to be bigger than Aaron on the juice. So HRA tips Thank continued. Far. What's the genre? Romantic comedy, action, thriller, comedy, or horror? Or triple X backdoor? <laughs> Fuck, it's one of your mates. <laughs> I would think it would be a, a, a comedic horror show. Uh, I think it's got to be the, you know, the old um, Shakespearean tragedy. tragedy comedy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely oh. Shakespearean. Chevy Chase to play G Paul. That'd oh, be great. Oh, oh you like that what one? What a eh? compliment. Oh. Like Chevy Chase. Oh. He's the best. Oh. He's the best. Uh, the, uh, wagering fiend, he, he joined in with Dallas. Oh. Would be done a treat by John C. Riley. In the, in the, in the robes. Yeah. In the orange robes. Where <laughs> so funny, the next one. Oh, that's just too funny, the next and one. And then John Walter, to his mate, says. Uh, I did tell Romeo Dev a living role to play Aaron Macy. Well, I think that's the unkindest cut of all. Aaron Macy, have a look at you. Whoa! <laughs> that's just too good. And then, right. Mug and then Pug, Mug Putter, very kind to John Walter, I think. You know, like Rupert Grint does a... Is, yeah, is, is John a, Walter? That's just very funny stuff, guys. So, oh, yeah, that was, that was, that was while, while we were doing our money on cottage that happened. Uh, ratings to win uh, in response to our uh, Glenn saying Kobe Jennings was a Rose Hill rider. Uh, Kobe Jennings definitely rides best at Rose Hill Gardens. Last 12 months, 66 rides, 11 wins, 55.62% on turnover. Wow, 16%. Well, I, just, well, I didn't have any stats, I just thought it in my head, so that's, uh, that's a very, very good result. Head. Well, but <laughs> then, then of course, he rode broadside and Terence Turnbuckle, hasn't he got a great, uh, a great head for racing? Terence Turnbuckle, uh, not happy with Kobe Jennings going far too slow on broadside. And the surfing punter. The old pearl at Just Old Eel got glimmed on the fair. Yeah, this is in relation to Cry for Peace. 
Wallace switch from provincials to city without winning. Early shoppers scored triple figures. They did indeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, Glenn Harvey then tweeted, uh, getting to the stage you can't bet at Wallaceville. Gordo back to Chateau de Cardboard. It is a hard joint to bet with, but got a lovely, lovely wife. Um, so, what's Gord's claim to fame, Mark? Old sparring partner I wrote back, in-law, loves punting, cooking, drinking, reading soccer and loathes regular work. And then Pollard makes me get up at 6.30 this morning to do the show. <laughs> like, well, wrote the, the, sorry, the sorry. fake Richie Callan that says, this looks like Gord's Tinder profile. Um, Craig said, hope Gordo doesn't shudder at the thought of you calling football soccer, Mark, loving the new format. I must say, I did go to write football, then I went, well, actually, then I have to write another word. Because, you know, I know that, you know, the diehards, oh, look, we, the, we the have football diehards, yeah. they just, you know, they can't bear the fact <coughs> that... Um, look, it used to really grate me. I'm, I'm fine with it now. But I think it used to grate me when um, football, soccer, was an ostracised sport. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's mainstream now, so I think... Well, we like, can, they call it can soccer in the easy. US. And, and um, oh, look, I, I think you've just got to write one word, which is soccer, league, union... Well, Aussie rules. There's two well, words. Well, I mean, but, but, I mean, you're just not being football enough. people find that ridiculous because they go, well, "What the hell are league and union? Like, they don't deserve to be called football. We're football." Yeah, okay. That's well, that's, that's elitist. Oh, fucking soccer, soccer, soccer. It is football. What? what yeah, but how, league, how, okay, league but, is league, unions union. Neither of them are football. No, rugby league's rugby league. They rugby call them rugby, rugby league rugby football. League. They're not football. So you agreeing with me? So when, when they say the people who say, oh, we're going to play footy on the weekend, that's not, that's soccer, is it? They're wrong. Or are <laughs> no, you no, wrong? Footy. So you were okay, no, no, now no, you're no, not no, okay no, no, no. Football, that's what it is. Think about it. Football. It's only the, 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 the world sport. We can call ourselves whatever we want and nobody has license to that word because we're the biggest. Anyway, the point, right, I'll, the point I'll put this to you. One thing, one thing I will say. I went to private school. We all played rugby union, okay? Mm. And the blokes that played soccer, we used to bash the shit out of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> little fucking yeah, pussies because yeah. their mum wouldn't let them play contact sport. <laughs> oh, soccer's not a contact sport. That's some pussy game. Oh, <laughs> in <look>. teenage years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Jesus. Oh, oh my God. There we go. It's coming back to me being in a pub as a 16 year old getting in fights about this kind of stuff. Like, anyway, the, my, my, the of the pub 16 year old my point is if I write football, <laughs> there will be some people that won't know which code. Gord's like, saying yeah, everyone, I, everyone I'll, knows I'll that say football soccer is on the show too, just for clarity in this sort of strange country we so live in. So, soccer isn't a word. Uh, look, I'm going to use it just for the fact that language is about imparting information and therefore in Australian society, which soccer is soccer. wrong, I think, soccer works. So all the parents out there say, oh, how'd your kid go to soccer on the weekend? They should be saying football? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Craig, so we just got a soccer Hey, are we going to do, are we going to do the trivia? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, are we this running out of time? Are we? I don't know. Uh, I suppose we could probably move on to... Greg Little John, he's a big fan of the show. He couldn't believe that Haraki was such good odds and... Uh, uh, yeah, and, Har uh, Haraki and then Hartnell. And then... And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but... Um, oh, I, I'm so with him. What, what about Hartnell? Is that right? I didn't want to bet. Two dollars and five. Oh, two twelve on the fair one, so. Really? Yeah. Good no, I don't bet in the middle. I only bet in the run. Seems particularly good odds, doesn't it? Uh, now it does, yeah, but... Yeah. But I think he's well, right. Well, yeah, I suppose, I suppose they would have been spooked. If anyone had watched Flemington on, did you see the trees at Flemington? They were like that. Yeah. It was that particularly windy. windy. Um, uh, so, anyway, uh, just quickly, but, uh, Warren Godson gave me a bit of a rap saying I've been here since 1980. Thanks for that, Warren, because you're, you're a mate of mine too, so, and I uh, appreciate that, and it's still there. And, and I did get one tweet in a week of someone saying I was a poser or something that says he never loses. I don't know who you were, but, like, honestly, I used to say I lose all the time. Uh, I, everybody has days like that, as in, you know, good days. I, now, don't forget to post his losers, or is he like poser Pollitt and claims to never lose? I, but I, I, I don't think I'm a poser in life. I mean, I, I, I'll just, I, I, just I, I want really on the rubbish. record now that I am, without doubt, the oh, most unsuccessful, disappointing person in Australia. Yeah, that's a poser. I know, so you are the winner in that stakes. Now, Look, Lord, I'm just a, I'm a disgrace. I'm so an uh, embarrassment to myself and my family, and my mother would roll in my grave. But that makes me a poser. I, I mean, I'm just not a poser. I hope I'm not a poser. Yeah. I mean, I run an internet show and I'm a bit mad. Yeah. I'm not a poser. 
No, of course not. I know, you just insulted me. You don't talk about when you lose. Fucking did How are you going? No good here. Fucking complete strip out. Fucked. I never say I win. And and like, I don't know how you'd think that. But anyway, I I value your opinion, Mr. Was it Gary Gross? Thanks for the email anyway, Gary. But you obviously don't know me very well. I am a fucking disgrace. Can't even walk harder than that, can you? Maybe, maybe a, a fucking race. disgrace. I can't wait to hang myself. I own nothing. I'm mental. I am a poser. You've really upset him here, Gary. He'll probably take a few days to recover from that. Meanwhile, maybe I've now got the edge in the upcoming segment. Yes, the new segment. Yes. Oh, uh, we've got him rattled. Was this the, uh, the tactics? Uh, oh, I'm on tilt. Big hello to Team Queen. Now we need some viewer input at some stage, as in like people to, 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 to represent. We can't just leave everything to Team. <laughs> so yeah, in future you have to sort of nominate well, yourself to be. There's a question. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're actually quite good questions. Yeah, we've I, got to I, work out what the buzzers are going to be. So what's oh, the is it like a competition? Yeah, yeah. it's a sale yeah. of the century. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, your buzzer. You do that. Oh, it's got to be different. No, you got to say something. You got to. Oh. All right. Okay, so, um, I'll say poser. Poser? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Everybody. can say puller. Puller. Yeah. Okay, puller. poser and puller. Poser and puller. Okay, perfect. Here we go. Question number one. Oh, no, 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 that's it. Name the horse that won the 1986 Blue Diamond Stakes at Caulfield. <laughs> I'm not hearing poser or, <laughs> or puller. Uh, um, I'll well, you can have a guess. Oh, and if anybody can Poser. tweet in the answer before they answer it right, <laughs> you win a thousand dollars. Poser! I said, I said poser. No, incorrect. No, I, my, no that means I get. Oh, okay. oh sorry. Fucking yeah, idiot. I you're naming all. No, you po said you're, you're going to pose a poser. Poser, because okay. that means I've, that's the poser. Yeah, okay, okay. That's okay. not the. Uh, sedative. <laughs> no. That wasn't a bad guess, actually. Mm. Yeah, I've got no idea. Bounding away. Okay, so that's one, Smith. that's one for Team Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, who am I? I was foaled in Western Australia by Arkenstone out, out of a northern Perla. queen. Perla. Yep. Placid Ark. Oh, jeez. I think that's a bonus poke because that question went for half of the page and you okay. got it in one sentence. So, yeah. One nil Okay, Perla. here we go. Question three. Can I get odds of who wins this? Which of these jockeys or combination of these jockeys has finished runner-up on the Sydney Premiership ladder most times? Ron Quinton, Malcolm Johnson, Darren Beedman, or Corey Brown? Who you gave a good serving to on the weekend. I appreciated that. He tried to put his head down and not look at you. He looked awful. What is a common, so, so they might be tied results, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, Pearl, I say Ron Quinton and Corey Brown. Poser, you can have a crack? No, you guys didn't say Ron. Yeah, I just want you to have a go as well. I'm trying to give you a chance here. <laughs> I'll say, um... Yeah, but he didn't I'll get say first. Po yeah, it's, it's, it's his go. <laughs> You've answered, now you can answer. What did he say? So I'm implying that Mark didn't so get what it did right. He, say? he, he said, said Ron Quinton and Corey Brown. Yeah. I'm going to say Ron Quinton and Corey Brown. <laughs> okay, Tactics all four here. of them. All four of them. <laughs> they're they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, oh, they're yeah. level... Oh, yeah. Okay. Question. yeah, I yelled at a brownie. He's gone, the only thing I'll give brownie a wrap, but he's gone nice and grey. He hasn't greasened up. He's just yeah, gone to the grey look, which so is kind impressive. Of makes him look a little bit distinguished as well. I think it's working for him. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, nearest to how many Sydney Metropolitan Race Meetings were held during January 1985? Oh, yep. 20. You want to have a sorry, sorry, sorry. 13. Sorry, yeah, I, I was confusing the provincials as well. Yeah. 13, okay. Right. So there should be. Oh, there's only 10 now. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I I've, I've, okay, I've got lost there. Before the benchmark sorry. system, we had the class system, but before that, we had a very convoluted <laughs> imperial system. Now, name the five race classes between maiden and open handicap that existed at New South Wales provincial tracks. Pola. <laughs> <laughs> It's so, it's so much closer, oh, isn't it? Oh, I yeah. it. So, I improvers, progressive, intermediate, advanced, novice. Okay, so it's, it's intermediate, advanced, provincial, regional, novice, so. 
pretty close. That was about right, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. I think teeny provincial, provincial stakes and regional stakes, they used to be a combination of classes. Oh, oh yeah. there we go, negative one for team. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> they were plates that were run under set weights. Okay, well, hold on, I'm just hearing here. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I phone a friend? <laughs> okay, now, this is the last question. The tiebreaker, because it's all tied. Is it really? Or really? <laughs> is it, creative scoring. Is it I'm, doing, I'm doing it like QI. Right, yeah. I'll, I'll ring Eddie. Okay. Closest to the nearest dollar, so you both can have a guess. How much prize money did Kingston Town win in his career? I oh, know this. Is a poser. One million two hundred forty thousand. Mark. I was going to say 1,150,000. That would be victory to the poser. $1,605,790. Oh, you did right. kick on. Yeah. Right, well, that was a bit, that was Teeny's, um, <laughs> and that'll be our last one. That was hectic. My little heart was racing. I think we're going to have to have it like the, you know, when you're playing Trivial Pursuit with kids and you have different questions for them. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, the easy yeah, ones, yeah, yeah. So, some things I understand. Some, yeah. Somebody, yeah, some easier questions as well. So, we do some teeny. No, but I mean, they, they could be like mounting yard questions. Like, you know, what colour was. Well, that's uh, how we'll get the information out of him. There it is. Anyway, <laughs> that's the end of the show. The old poser's here. Better get in the beach and these budgie smugglers and pose around. Um, you might need, pretty you good might show. Um, non-wind Get involved spot. with us. Like us on Facebook or whatever it's called. Some yeah. sort of box. So there won't be any midweek preview show this week because um, that yeah, would be tonight. Yeah, we'll and I haven't even started. And Friday will be a preview of um, is it Spring Champion Stakes Day on Saturday? I think it is. Yeah. It's also it's Caulfield, Guinness Day. Caulfield Guinness Day. Yeah. yeah. Randwick again on Sunday. Yeah, Randwick. Yeah. In fact, it's Randwick. There's an extra Randwick. So it's Randwick the next three Saturdays as well. Uh, okay, and um, pretty exciting show, guys. So yeah, thanks, Dad. Good. Thanks, um, Ma, uh, Thanks, Bella. thanks, mate. Now Poser's going to sign out here. I hate someone calling me a Poser. Oh, oh you've ruined his gonna, day. Yeah. Big hello to Gary Grace. Mm -hmm. See ya. See ya.